Okay, I've kept you guys waiting long enough. It's time for part two of What If Ace continued to travel with the Straw Hat Pirates. As a little bit of a recap, uh, pretty much everything stays exactly the same, except... Ace could easily defuse the bomb at Alabasta, pretty much containing the blast. I'm not even sure he would have to do all the theatrics of flying up into the atmosphere to defuse it. He might be able just to touch the thing and contain the blast right then and there in the clock tower. Um, but other than that, I think for the most part, the Alabasta arc would have played out exactly the same. I think Ace would have seen Luffy fighting against Crocodile as an important stepping stone for his little brother. And, you know, he might have stepped in to, like, bridge the gap every now and then but I don't think he would have taken that fight away from Luffy. I think he would have allowed him to fight against Crocodile, and yeah, sure, if it was looking like Luffy was going to straight up die, then of course Ace would have stepped in, and if Luffy did die, Ace could have finished off Crocodile. It would have been a really epic fight, um, but of course we know Luffy was capable of defeating Crocodile at that point in the story without his brother, and I think Ace could have seen that. So, where we left off is let's just assume that Ace continued to travel with the Straw Hats after Alabasta. Um, the whole reason he was out there was to look for Blackbeard. So maybe um, Ace's perspective was like, hey, if I travel around with you guys, like, I know Blackbeard is somewhere in this part of the Grand Line because he was sighted at Drum Island. I know he has to be somewhere around here, right? So he wasn't in Alabasta, so I'll just pal around with you guys until I eventually find another lead. Well, of course, the next island the Straw Hats go to is Jaya, where they run right into Marshall D. Teach. He's right there in the bar eating cherry pie, all right? So... The way I looked at this is that, you know, let's say the Straw Hats walk into the bar and Ace is with them and he sees Marshall D. Teach over there eating pie and he immediately freaks out and attacks him. Now, there was some contention here on whether or not even though Ace traveled to Jaya, he would encounter Blackbeard because remember, not all of the Straw Hats were in that pub together. Terry's pub, you know, Terry, of course we all know Terry. My God, that man has a mustache that Whitebeard would be envious of. But no, like, um, it was Luffy and Zoro and Nami went into this bar, and that's where they encountered Bellamy and everything, but not all the Straw Hats were there. So I got a lot of people that were like, what if Ace just stayed on the ship and never encountered Blackbeard? I'm like... All right, well, if that's the case, I guess he never encounters Blackbeard then. But this is, for the sake of argument, let's say he went into the bar with them and he sees Blackbeard right there. Another point of contention was, would Ace have fought Blackbeard right then and there in the bar? And some people argued that he would not, or he would move the location, or something like that. Um, honestly, when Ace ran into Blackbeard at Bonaro Island, you get the impression that he did kind of, like, stake the place out a little bit. Because the idea was Blackbeard was on Bonaro Island kind of raising havoc, just doing typical pirate stuff, like ransacking the village and, like, torturing the townspeople. And the townspeople actually all left. They, like, fled the town and were hiding on the coast by the time Ace actually confronted Blackbeard. So there were really not a lot of civilians hanging around when Ace and Blackbeard fought at Bonaro Island to begin with, right? So it gave the impression that Ace was like, okay, Blackbeard's on this island, Bonaro Island. I'm going to stake the place out. I'm going to see where he's at. I'm going to wait until the civilians are out of the way, and then I'm going to attack. So I'll give it to you on that one because I said in the, in the video just to kind of have a big bombastic finish. I'm like, Ace just walks into the bar, sees Blackbeard, and he's like, Blackbeard, teach! And then he like, he kens and just burns a giant hole in the bar or whatever so um all right all right now I don't think Ace would have let that opportunity, you know, squeak by. I don't think he would have been like, oh, well, you know, my brother's here. I can't let him get into danger. I can't let the fight, you know, you know, cover the entire island. So I therefore have to wait until later to fight Blackbeard. I, I don't know if he would go 100% with that. Surely Ace does not want to kill innocent civilians in the process, though. So I'm thinking, like, at best, what would happen is if Ace did see Blackbeard, he would confront him and remember when Blackbeard saw Ace he was like a, at Bonaro Island in the actual canon of the manga he was a little bit nervous but he wasn't like overtly like fearful he wasn't like terrified upon seeing his former commander he was just like oh hey Ace uh 
how you doing? It's been a while. And Ace is just like, you know, you know why I'm here, you idiot. You know, you sack of crap. You killed my crewmate and stole a devil fruit. I'm here to bring you back. And so he, at that, now remember at that point though, also this was after Annie's lobby where Luffy and his crew's bounties were updated to the point where the whole crew had bounties after Annie's lobby. And so Blackbeard had the idea at Bonaro Island, like, hey, we're going to head to Water 7. We're going to capture Straw Hat Luffy. And so that's when Ace was like, hey, that's my little brother. Brother, I'm not going to let you do that. And so Blackbeard didn't know about the connection between Ace and Luffy there. So that was another reason Ace kind of like jumped into the fight at Bonaro Island as quickly as he did. He was like, oh, if I let him go, he's going to go after Luffy and I have to prevent that. OK, but here's the interesting thing here. OK, so Luffy's bounty at the end of Eni's lobby was 300 million, which was very, very high. OK, however, remember, after Alabasta, Luffy's bounty was also updated from 30 million million to 100 million making Luffy a supernova at that point now obviously 300 is a larger number than 100 yeah it is so it's not as an impressive of a bounty but if Ace and Luffy both walked into Terry's bar together and Ace sees Blackbeard and he confronts him you know it's possible that Blackbeard would recognize Ace obviously but also Luffy and be like hey you're straw hat Luffy I just saw in the paper you have a bounty of a hundred million berries and so maybe even if he doesn't directly say that like I'm gonna capture you and bring you over to the Marines even if he doesn't bring that up Ace might be aware of like oh crap Luffy has a higher bounty on his head now so he's going to be a target so I really have to make sure to bring him down so I honestly think Ace at best would give Blackbeard a choice he would be like hey either we you know we can go somewhere that's more quiet and we can fight or you know we're gonna fight right here you know you you pick right I'm giving you a chance here right and it really depends on what Blackbeard decides but Blackbeard is very scheming he's that kind of character right so I don't know I feel like Blackbeard at that sense because his crew is not immediately around him either at Bonaro Island Burgess and Van Auger were all hanging around him Blackbeard was by himself in the bar and his crew, I guess, were just in Mock Town, just walking around, and then they joined up later, right? So Blackbeard might realize, like, holy crap, I'm kind of outnumbered here. Not only Ace, but also Straw Hat Luffy, plus Pirate Hunter Zoro, and plus Nami's there. Bellamy and his crew is there as well, but I don't think they'd really be getting involved there. I can see Bellamy actually trying to speak up and being like, hey, what are you idiots doing? And then Ace just telling me, like, just shut up. This isn't about you. Just shut up. And Bellamy's like, oh, okay, sir. <laughs> because I feel like Bellamy would recognize Ace and be like, okay, yeah, we should. Hey, guys, let's just leave. I, I think in this version of events, Bellamy just leaves the bar very quietly because he doesn't want to mess with Fire Fist Ace. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, I mean, Blackbeard might try to do something scheming, but I think Ace is too smart for that. Unless Blackbeard just opens up right away with the Yami Yami no Mi to like grab Ace right there in the bar and like try to pummel him as much as possible. Unless he opens up with that, Ace I think would start the fight. And he might just kind of like yell to the whole bar of just like, everybody here, clear out. Just clear out, get out of here, and then tell everybody else to clear out of town as fast as possible, right? And then he just starts heating up. And then Terry's like, okay, I guess I'm going on vacation. And it's like, all right, everybody, um, it's on the house. Everybody leave the bar. <laughs> just like, okay. All right, because I don't think Ace would let that go. I don't think he would just be like, all right, teach. You killed one of my best friends. I'll let you decide the nature of our duel. It's not a duel. It's like, I'm going to beat your ass and then haul you back to the Moby Dick. All right, that's what's going to happen here. All right. So Ace might give a little bit of leniency to the fact that there's civilians around, but I still think he's going to start that fight as quickly as he can after Blackbeard what he did. Okay. So as I said in the last part, um, I think the fight itself would pretty much go exactly as it did at Bonaro. The only difference is that Blackbeard would have had a little bit more time to practice with his Yami Yami no Mi. At this point, at Jaya, he's not as experienced with it. But not a tremendous amount of time really passes 
passes from Jaya to Bonaro Island when he fights Ace. We have Skypea, and then we have um, the Water 7 in Eni's Lobby arc. So maybe a um, couple of months at most there. I mean, that's definitely a lot of time to practice with your fruit. So he's not as skilled. Um, but just the idea and the nature of the Logia and the fact that Blackbeard did research it for most of his life. Uh, it wasn't like he got the fruit by accident and he has to learn these abilities. Like, he doesn't know what the fruit does. He he researched and read about the Yami Yami no Mi for years, ever since he was a child. So I think he would have a pretty good grasp on, like, exactly what it can do. Um, there might be a bit of a learning curve. But Blackbeard is also very interesting, whereas even having the Guru Guru no Mi for a short amount of time really proved he was effective with it, okay? So... I think the Yami Yami no Mi at that point, like, maybe not as refined as when he fights Ace in the manga, but I still think it would be good enough to actually defeat him, and it would be a tough battle, and it would be a very similar battle to what happened at uh, Bonaro Island. But anyway, part one of the video ended off with Ace being defeated and grabbed by Blackbeard and carted off, and then the Straw Hats are like, you know, like Luffy let Ace fight Blackbeard because he's like, okay, this is his fight. Ace would have probably also said, you know, stay away from the battle, Luffy, this is my fight, you know, trust me with it, and Luffy if he would have like respected his brother's wishes he would have been very nervous he would have been scared for his brother's life but it's just like hey this is my brother's fight and he wants to do it so i'll let him do this okay so after the fight's over let's say ace is being carted away the straw hats then confront the blackbeard pirates at that point pre time skip how exactly would this have gone all right so with that being said we have a little chart here um the Straw Hats do outnumber the Blackbeard Pirates at this point. The Blackbeard Pirates, just to go through the roster really quick, we of course have Marshall D. Teach, Blackbeard, uh, with the power of the Yami Yami no Mi. Then we have Jesus Burgess, who had a previous bounty of, at the, well, actually, at this point in the story, his bounty was 20 million. Um, and then, of course, we have Van Auger, the Supersonic. His bounty was 64 million at this point. He's the sniper of the crew. Then we have Lafitte. <laughs> Hey guys, editing teching here. Hey, you want to know something really interesting that I should have noticed before I started to film this video? Turns out Lafitte wasn't even in Mocktown when this happened. Oh, so funny. Yeah, he was off in Marijuana, sort of suggesting Blackbeard to the uh, government in order to become a warlord, right? So he wasn't even there. So it was literally just Blackbeard, uh, Burgess, Van Auger, and Doc Q and Stronger that were in Mocktown, okay? So for the rest of this video, I have Nami and Robin fighting against Lafitte. So I, I think the overall ending of what I arrive at will pretty much be the same with or without Lafitte feet being there and Lafitte is such an unknown anyway because we really don't know that much about him I go more into that in the video but I guess you could say it's, it's since he's not there Nami and Robin could maybe help Usopp fight against Van Auger or help Chopper fight against Doc Q um, but yeah just go ahead with that because I completely forgot he wasn't even there he was off in Marijua doing something else so yeah but I think the ending of this video kind of arrives at the same conclusion the Demon Sheriff, who has a bounty of 42 million at this point. He also has some sort of devil fruit to this day. We still do not know the name of it, but it's some kind of zone that allows him to summon wings. And they look like pigeon wings or like dove wings, but he's able to fly. Then we have Doc Q who has a bounty of 72 million, which is actually very interesting because Doc Q, at this point, with just the initial Blackbeard crew, has the highest bounty, um, even higher than Blackbeard himself because Blackbeard actually had no bounty at the beginning of the story. It wasn't until after Marine Ford that he actually got his first bounty, right? Um, and then, of course, we have Doc Q's horse, Stronger, who doesn't really have a bounty because he's just a horse, right? But even if you include the horse, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six members of Blackbeard's crew at this point versus the seven members of the Straw Hat crew. Of course, we have Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, Nami, Usopp, Chopper, and Robin at this point, okay? So at least in terms of numbers, the Straw Hats are greater, which means obviously they win. So end of video. Seven's a higher number than six. What do you want from me? That's theorizing. That's 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 what if battles right there at its height. <laughs> you know, just that's all it is, right? Okay, if you're outnumbered, you lose, right? Okay, and one of them's a horse. You know, that's just it. Okay, so the way I have this um uh, uh basically shaken down, Blackbeard is going to confront Luffy, or rather, Luffy's going to confront Blackbeard. Okay, because you know he's the one that beat his brother, grabbed his unconscious body, and started hauling Ace away. Luffy would be like, Ace, you know. PUT MY BROTHER DOWN! 
And then, like, Gummo Gummo no Rocket, like, right into Blackbeard, okay? And then Blackbeard's like, Zeha! All right, well, let's go. Bam! And then Luffy, like, rockets right into him, knocks Blackbeard back. That would hurt him, of course, because he feels pain a lot more intense. Same thing at Impel Down when he punched him really hard. So I think that's, that's going to be a one-on-one -on -one right there. Then, we don't have Shiryu yet, so Zoro is not going to fight a swordsman. I guess they would just go up against the next strongest opponent. So Burgess is like the big Mexican luchadore, so he's just going to be like, Woo-wee! Let's do it! Oh, we actually, Burgess's laughter style and his cadence is kind of similar to... Kind of Mr. Poopy Butthole from Rick and Morty. Ooh-wee! Ooh-wee! <laughs> so, now I'm gonna see some fan art of those two hanging out, you know? Like, like Mr. Poopy Butthole on top of, uh, Jesus Burgess's shoulder. He's like, Ooh-wee, buddy! Let's go beat some heads! He's like, Ooh-wee! Let's do that, Burgess! So like, okay, so there's that. But Zoro and Sanji teaming up together. I think that would actually be really cool to see Zoro and Sanji, like, he's like, alright, well, he's like, hey, dartboard brow, let's fight against the Mexican luchador. He's like, don't tell me what to to do moss head but okay and so that fight gets started um then we have van auger who i feel like van auger it has to be a fight against usopp right like it has to be i was thinking maybe usopp and chopper could team up because they usually team up like they fought against mr four and miss merry christmas at alabasta but i i feel like chopper should go up against doc q because doctors and stuff so with that being said let's have at least usopp hanging out on the sidelines and trying to disarm Augur in some way. Now, whether that means, like, Augur takes out his rifle and, like, tries to shoot Luffy. And then Usopp takes out his, uh, his pachinko, his slingshot. Now, remember, the Straw Hats are also powered down here. So the Blackbeard Pirates are not as strong as they are post-time skip. Or, you know, even by the end of the, at the end of the first part with, um, the level 6 prisoners. But neither of the Straw Hats. So, Luffy does not have gear 2nd or gear 3rd at this point. Zoro does not have his Ashura. Sanji does not have Diablo Jamba. Nami does not have her perfected climb attack. She's still using the, the party trick climb attack that she got from freaking Alabasta from Usopp. Usopp doesn't have his Kabuto. Uh, they haven't gone to Skypea yet. They don't have dials. They don't have any of that technology. Uh, Chopper doesn't really have a lot of... Well, Chopper could still go Monster Point. That is still on the table. Hold off on that. That is still on the table there. Um, and Robin, uh, she, you know, she's Robin. She just joined. She has all the powers that she had pretty much all throughout the first part of the story. Um, she doesn't get any huge powers power-ups until way later post time skip right okay so just just keep all that in mind there so there might be a situation where van auger takes out his rifle and maybe usopp could like fire and like shoot the rifle out of um van auger's hands or there could be a, a neat little interaction between the two but we'll get to that in a second then we have lafitte who is the demon sheriff and i actually thought about this so you know where he was the demon sheriff at it was actually in the West Blue, which is where Robin is from. So I thought, like, maybe Nami and Robin at this point could team up together to fight against Lafitte. Now, remember, at this point in the story, Nami did defeat Mrs. Doublefinger, right? But that was a very close fight, and she got really wrecked at the end of that. She got stabbed and, like, you know, skewered through her ankle. I mean, she got really, you know, hurt in that fight. And she still only has, like, a little bit of a party trick kind of mechanic with her fighting style with the climb attack itself right? Um, she is very athletic, she's very agile and stuff to dodge attacks, uh, but she doesn't really have that impact, like, power yet to, like, just, like, you know, Thunderbolt tempo or launch, like, I mean, she can sort of do it, but it's just a lot weaker with this version of the climb attack, right? Not until they get access to dials is it going to really improve. So I think Nami has to go up against Lafitte with Robin's help. And maybe Robin would even have heard about Lafitte. And so it's like, ah, you are Lafitte-san. You are the one that was the sheriff in the West. And then you fled because of your cruelty. You know, what happened to you? And Lafitte might have heard about the scholars of O'Hara. He was like an officer, basically. You know, he might have been working for... See, it's kind of dubious whether or not what he was, like what organization he belonged to. Because he was like, he was a peace officer or a sheriff so is that a branch of the marines that he was part of is that a branch of the world government or was it just like the local authority you know it was just like you know every town kind of has its own like police and stuff like genzo was the sheriff at kokoyashi genzo wasn't really a member of the marines officially he was just like a local you know um you know sheriff or whatever so might have been the situation with lafitte maybe he was a sheriff for like a larger kingdom um and it was a big deal when he left but yeah and then we would have doc q and stronger just against chopper and um let's let's actually start with this one at the very end and then we'll just work our way back toward luffy and blackbeard okay so 
the thing about Doc Q, there is so many fascinating things about his character. Okay, so number one, he had the highest original bounty out of the entire crew. It was 72 million. He is 26 years old pre-time skip. He's younger than I am, and look, he's like a sickly old man, and his horse, Stronger, is also equally sick. He has that thing, he carries like a scythe blade around, he's known as the Shinigami, the god of death. He carries those baskets of apples that like explode, right? So there's a lot of interesting stuff with him. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I've thrown this out there before, but I think it's possible that Doc Q has some sort of paramecia fruit that is all around disease and ailments, like the disease, disease fruit, or something like that, right? And because he ate the fruit, he's always constantly sickly. He'll never die because of the illness, but he's always sickly. So he's like always running a fever. He's always sweaty. He's always like he always has aches and pains and stuff. He's always coughing and sneezing, but he'll never die from these illnesses. Okay. But the advantage of this fruit is that he literally is a disease man. So anything he touches, comes in contact with, becomes sick and dies as well. And so maybe that's why Stronger, who is the horse that supports him, is always equally sick. It's not like a gag of like, hey, Doc Q is really sick. He has to ride on this horse because he can't walk on his own. But the horse is also equally sick. No, it's not that the horse is sick um, all the time. It's be Well, it is, but it's because directly because of Doc Q's influence. And maybe he can control the level of disease that it afflicts. Um, but he can't make it nothing. So if he's touching this horse and he's like riding on the horse constantly, the horse is going to be sick as Doc Q is sick, right? But then he can like amp up the disease to levels to actually like infect people that he comes in contact with and kill them that way. I think the bombs inside the apples are just his little flourish that he likes to use. He's kind of a messed up individual, right? And so that's how he got the impression of like the god of death. Also the, the whole idea of like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Um, he is like a pestilence, right? He's like pestilence where he goes places and just disease kind of follows and everybody dies i could see doc q like wandering through town and just like everybody dies in his wake and that's how he got the bounty of 72 million not because of his own battle prowess he really has none but because wherever he people would just die and so he was just branded a criminal because of that and so blackbeard welcomed him into his crew but like we're very careful not to come in direct contact with him or anything like that something along those lines so with that being said, though, Chopper going up against Doc Q, he would notice immediately something is up with this guy. Like, Chopper at first would probably not even want to fight him because he's very clearly ill, all right? But as the fight would continue on, maybe Doc Q, I mean, we've seen him use pistols before. He has a scythe. He can swing it. So he's not so ill that he's just incapable. Also, here's another thing. Maybe the whole idea of him being sick all the time, that's just him choosing that in order to seem more weak like if he wanted to he could like rescind his own illness and make himself like you know perfectly healthy again he just chooses that form to be seen as like weak and feeble maybe but he's always like that even when he was going up against wiper at marine ford so i feel like that's not the case like that's just a side effect of the fruit like a side effect of treble eating the beta beta nomi is just he's a mucus guy and he's covered with goo constantly and he really can't control that kind of the same thing with doc q right so chopper would probably be like a little bit like dubious as to even fight him just like are you okay do you want me to look after you right you're really sick i don't know if you should be fighting also your your horse seems really sick too oh chopper can talk to animals holy shit oh Okay, so Chopper could talk to animals. He would probably try to talk to Stronger. And he'd be like, hey, Stronger, are you okay? Are you all right, horse? And he's just like, oh, nay. Is that nay as in nay or nay as in no, I'm not okay? Nay! And so he's talking to a freaking horse and Doc Q's like, wait, wait, you can talk to the horse? What? That'd be actually really funny if Chopper could convince Stronger to like, hey, why are you with this guy? Just kick him off you and run away. You'll probably feel better. And Stronger's like, oh, okay. I didn't know that was an option. He like kicks off Dr. Q and he just runs away. And he's like, all right, maybe. And then it's like Doc Q against Chopper. But of course, he's very deadly. So I think if Chopper actually had to fight him or if Doc Q took advantage of the fact Chopper was curious, maybe, maybe Doc Q could be like, oh, little reindeer doctor, 
do you think you could cure my ailment? And Chopper's like, well, I'm a doctor. Of course I can. I have to look at you first, though. You're very, very sick. Doc Q could spin a whole bullshit story about how, like, I, I'm not really with these guys. I'm not with the Blackbeard Pirates. They just captured me. I'm just a prisoner. Please, reindeer, you have to save me. And Chopper and his naivete at this point, like, he's only been traveling with the Straw Hats for a short amount of time. And the fact he is a doctor might actually might sway him to being like oh you poor soul you know chopper's been you know swayed other ways you know that are way less believable than this you know like when the whole fake straw hat thing was going on so chopper might very well like okay i'll i'll make sure you're okay so he goes over to like you know give uh, an analysis to doc q to like take his blood pressure or whatever figure out what's wrong with him and then that's when doc q like grabs chopper and like slams him into the ground and he's just like <laughs> you stupid reindeer and then Chopper gets up and he's like, all right, you're obviously a threat. And he goes into his human point to begin to fight. But then maybe because Doc, you touched him, he'll begin to af feel the effects of a disease. Now, Chopper himself, though, being a doctor, might be able to realize what the disease is. Maybe he might figure out a way to counteract it or something, maybe similar to Queen. But remember, this is before the time skip. So he doesn't have access to like all the medical technology at the Torino Kingdom and all the stuff he learned. Even so, he still studied at drum for years and Kareha taught him a lot of stuff stuff so even if it's not like oh man i'm starting to have a fever maybe i might have something in my pack like some medicine he can pop in not a rumble ball but some kind of medicine to like you know abate the symptoms long enough to continue the fight maybe something along those lines right and i'm feeling like if the fight got really really out of hand where it was looking like the straw hats were not going to win um or like luffy was about to be curb stomped by blackbeard or something Chopper still does have Monster Point. He still has it the same way that he used it against uh, um, uh, Kumadori at Eni's Lobby. Like, he was about to die. If it ever gets to that point where it's like, okay, either Chopper manages to defeat Doc Q on his own, or he's about to die, in which case he pops the Rumble Balls, goes Monster Point at Jaya. And, oh, by the way, all of Jaya, Mock Town is going to get wrecked by the end of this. I don't care what you say. Like, Mock Town was already destroyed by Ace and Blackbeard fighting, so now they're in a giant crater, essentially. And so, yeah, Jaya is going to be wiped out. Cricket's going to have to find a new place to live after this. <laughs> you know, just like, all right, uh, let's like, let's get out of here. Mashara, Shoujo, let's just leave. This is this is turning all all sorts of bad. Let's just get out of here, right? Let's find another island of dreams to set up our, our goals or whatever. So that's the chopper fight. I feel like he would not be able to defeat Doc Q on his own, so he'd go into Monster Point. Now, would Monster Point be able to defeat Doc Q? You know, like... I feel at that point Chopper could just step on him. Because Doc Q does not seem particularly mobile. He doesn't seem very agile. So, like, couldn't Chopper just go monster point? Like, and then Doc Q's like, <laughs> well, ain't that something? And then Chopper just boom, 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 just pounds him into the ground like a damn pancake. Maybe if Stronger hung around, maybe Ch Stronger could, like, get him out of there, and then Chopper could just rampage around the battlefield. But, you know, I, I don't think Chopper by himself is going to be able to defeat Doc Hughes, so he would go Monster Point. So just keep that in mind in the background as Monster Point Chopper is stomping around. Um, next up, we have Lafitte, Nami, and Robin. And we don't know much about how Lafitte fights other than the fact he can fly, but that's kind of Robin's specialty. I mean, just going off of her fight with Pell at Alabasta, Robin knows right away how to fight against opponents that are able to fly. So she could just use her Hana Hana Nomi to try to restrain Lafitte in the same way. So he might not be able to fly around the battlefield too much. Now, this would probably be, I think, the most interesting fight aside from Blackbeard versus Luffy. Maybe even more interesting because Robin might very well know about Lafitte's past and his history. And Lafitte, on the other hand, would probably definitely know about Robin. Robin being the demon child and also just the fact of, like, her wanted posters everywhere and whole thing with Alabasta and stuff. So Lafitte might very well know exactly who Robin is, okay? Um, which is also a problem because Blackbeard is looking for, you know, the Poneglyphs and stuff. So they might find out, like, Lafitte might be like, Oh, Captain, this is Nico Robin, the woman that can read Poneglyphs. And Blackbeard would be fighting Luffy and he'd be like, Oh, really? Say ha ha, you don't say, Lafitte. Well, we should probably capture her then i'm on it captain right so he tries to fly up robin uses her hana hana to restrain him he's like oh oh this is going to be an interesting fight now here's the problem though we don't know how lafitte fights we just don't 
and that's the problem with, well, actually, no, I think that's really only the problem with Doc Q and Lafitte. At least with Doc Q, we can sort of make an assumption that Doc Q has some sort of disease ability, right? And at least he has those bombs that he can throw around and stuff, but even if Chopper goes into Monster Point, those bombs aren't going to do shit, right? He's freaking Monster Point Chopper. His defense is crazy high. Some little bombs and an apple are not going to stagger him at all. Um, but when it comes to Van Auger, he fights with a rifle. Burgess is a wrestler, pretty basic, and we know how Blackbeard fights. We know nothing about Lafitte. Lafitte can fly, and um, he's a tap dancing expert. So he busts out his cane and like tapity tap, and he just starts tapping dancing around the battlefield. And Nami and Robin are just it's pretty good skill. That's pretty good skill right there. Lafitte's like, ah, oh, thank you. I took seven years of tap. He's like, oh, no, not bad, impressive. I like that, you know. But other than that, like, I think he used just pistols when they were all gunning down Whitebeard at Marineford, and that was it. So okay, he's got a cane. He's got tap dancing shoes. He's got a pistol. He's got a top hat. And he can fly, which, as I've said, Robin can render that advantage meaningless. So, I honestly think this fight might just go in Robin and Nami's favor, honestly. Unless Lafitte busts out some crazy ability that, you know, we've yet to see in the manga, which he probably does have. But that's too many hypotheticals because, like, what am I supposed to say? Like, what if Lafitte could transform into the Incredible Hulk? What if Lafitte could shoot laser beams from his mouth? What if Lafitte has, like, a crazy powerful version of hockey or armament or something we've never seen before? I mean, like, he might have some of those things, but we don't know. Or he might not have any of that stuff. He might just be, like, really cruel because it was stated he was a very cruel sheriff. So he might just have this very, like, bloodthirsty kind of, like, side to him like Kondro has. Um, and there's that. And so maybe if you get him mad enough, he changes his personality where he's kind of, like, Kind of lighthearted and fancy free, just kind of like, oh, hello there, everybody. I'm Lafitte. Watch me tap dance. But if you piss him off enough, he'll be like, what are you doing? You know, he might do that, you know. So maybe there's something like that. But I still think Robin and Nami are enough to defeat him at this point in the story, at least render him incapacitated. Like, all it would really take is Robin to restrain him with her arms and then, like, Nami to, like, charge up some lightning bolt or something and then Robin lets go and then, boom, he just gets electrocuted, right? So, yeah, I don't know if Lafitte would be able to really uh, go up against them at this point. Um, so then we have Van Auger against Usopp, and we're literally talking about a high-powered rifle that can shoot something, like, kilometers away versus Usopp with his slingshot. Not the Kabuto, literally just his normal pachinko slingshot. I think Van Auger would win this, guys. I think, because even if Usopp is lucky enough to shoot, like, the rifle out of Van Auger's hands... It's Van Auger. You know he has a sidearm somewhere. He's probably got, like, holsters for, you know, pistols in his jacket. He's got an ankle holster. He's got a wrist holster. He's got a neck holster. He's got behind-the-ear holster. Has a gun inside of his hair. Has a gun inside of his underwear. You know, he has. he's probably decked out with, like, a Derringer or something, right? Like, he has some other weapon. He's not going to go into a battle with just his rifle and nothing else, right? Um, you know, so I think Usa maybe if he's very very lucky he sees Van Auger take out his rifle and then Usopp takes out his like he's like gunpowder star and like blast like hits his hand and like blows the gun out of his hands and Van Auger's like hmm so you have a sniper on your crew as well and then Usopp's like ha take that I've disarmed you and then Van Auger just Ah, crap. And then Usopp might be able to dodge the shots, but I just think in terms of sheer firepower, like, if he had his Kabuto, if he had the dials from uh, Skypea, different story, but it's before that. If it's Usopp with his black Kabuto post-time skip and observation hockey, you know, like, we might have a shot here. But pre-time skip Usopp against Van Auger, man, I, I, I don't see Usopp managing to hold him off for very long. Um, I just hope Usopp maybe gets really, really lucky with that first shot. If he can render um, Van Auger's rifle, like if he can break it or if he can damage it to the point where he can't use it, then it's like, all right, maybe that evens the playing field. But I think Usopp would lose that fight. Um, even if Chopper is helping him out, like I, I don't see any way that Chopper can really like... Because here's the thing, like even if Chopper goes monster point, 
Van Auger's very fast. He can basically just, like, hop away because he's a sniper. That's his whole thing. He's not really going to be into, like, close combat sort of situation. That's not Van Auger. So Van Auger might very well, like, try to retreat and hang out, like, on the other side of the island. Like, Van Auger could literally retreat to the other side where, like, Cricket's house is. And he just hangs out on top of that cardboard cutout of the mansion. And then he just, like, stays up there. And that's his, like, sniping perch. And he just, like, fires shots back and forth. And, like, that's really what he might try to do. And if that's the case, Usopp might be able to see him and, like, like just, like, pachinko shot. High-powered armor-piercing bullet. That armor-piercing round's gonna... It, the pachinko shots aren't gonna do shit. Maybe if Usopp fired, like, an explosive round, maybe it, it hits the armor-piercing round, like, the actual bullet, and it doesn't destroy it, but it, like, knocks it off its trajectory... That's maybe the best Usopp could manage, but how long could he keep that up? Because, once again, Van Auger has a damn rifle that he's like, boom, ch -ch boom, ch -ch boom, ch -ch Meanwhile, Usopp is just, duh, duh, slingshot, and it doesn't have as much range. I mean, I know it's Usopp. He's a really good sniper, but he's kind of limited with just his regular old slingshot here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, then we have Burgess versus Zoro and Sanji. I think Zoro and Sanji could kick Burgess's ass. I mean, like... We don't know, he might have a devil fruit right now in the story, but back then he didn't. He was really just this big muscular guy. And at least we know from what uh, Blackbeard said at the fight at Bonaro Island, like Burgess and Augur were no match for Ace. So, you know, that's like a basic idea for their power levels, I suppose. But I think Zoro and Sanji teaming up fighting together should be able to cut slash kick Burgess down. Even though Zoro doesn't have his Ashura, Sanji doesn't have his Diablo Jambe, they're still wicked powerful. Um, Sanji had that kick at uh, Alabast that was able to one-shot the Banana Wani with one kick. You know, the anti-manner kick course, that was really powerful. Zoro still got his Onigiri, his Lion Song. He learned a little bit about observation during his fight with Daz Bones, cutting through steel. So maybe one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit iffy, but I think both of them working together, it would be a little bit of a tough fight. But but I think Zoro and Sanji could come out on top of Burgess. And there's really not much more to say about Burgess because he literally is just, he's a tank. He's literally a tank. He's just this big muscular guy. He's a luchador. He does all the wrestling moves and throws buildings and stuff. He picks up a building and throws it at them. Zoro slices it in half. Sanji kicks it to pieces. He picks up a giant rock and throws it. You know, Sanji could break boulders, you know? So, like... Anything that he could pick up in the immediate vicinity and, like, throw at them, Zoro and Sanji should be able to dodge or slice apart or kick apart with very little problems. And then it just comes down, like, yeah, I mean, if Burgess gets a punch out on Sanji or Zoro, yeah, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna knock him down, but it's not gonna be, like, a one-shot kind of thing. And it's two-on-one, so I feel like Sanji and Zoro would win, right? Let's get to Blackbeard versus Luffy now. All right, so... Luffy does have an advantage going into this battle in that if he actually witnessed the fight between his brother Ace and Blackbeard, then he would at least know about the tricks that Blackbeard has up his sleeve. He has the power to absorb devil fruits or at least, you know, negate devil fruit powers. He has the ability to open up the darkness whirlpool and all that kind of stuff. But also keep in mind, Luffy would be really, really angry at Ace being defeated and grabbed and being carted off, right? So Luffy is a genius with battle, but he can also be very emotional at times. So I think it might be a situation where he's going to start off the fight in a blind rage. Maybe as the fight continues, maybe after Blackbeard grabs him and punches him a time, maybe Luffy will realize, okay, ow, that hurt. I, I, that wasn't supposed to hurt. He's like, okay, holy crap. Yeah, he was able to use that ability to touch and hurt Ace, even though he's made of fire. So he has some ability that allows him to turn off Devil Fruit powers. I got to be careful here. Now, Luffy is like when he was fighting against Crocodile, even after Crocodile showed him all the stuff he could do in like the first battle at Rain Base. Luffy came up with like, all right, well, let me try to like capture you with Gummo Gummo no net. And let me try to eat you with Gummo Gummo no Baku Baku. Now, it didn't work, but at least Luffy was trying, right? He was coming up with ideas in order to fight, okay? So maybe it was something like that where it's like, okay, if I come in contact with him, if he touches me, then I can't use my rubber powers. All right, so maybe then Luffy will try to like pick up objects and try to like slingshot them toward um, 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 Teach or something like that. Like pick up a boulder, wrap his arm around the boulder and use it like Gamu Gamu no flail or something like that, trying to hit Teach that way. And the thing is, Teach would still be weakened after the fight with Ace. You know, he would still have a lot of pain. He would still be feeling that because Teach feels way more pain than the average human because 
because of his devil fruit power, right? Now, before you get all excited here and think that, like, wait, maybe so Luffy has a chance to defeat Blackbeard. No, he doesn't. And I'll tell you why. Because even if Luffy was really lucky in this battle, like he knows not to come in direct contact with him, so Luffy was using other techniques to try to keep his distance, always bouncing around the battlefield, trying to avoid Blackbeard from like, coming in contact with him. Like, even if Luffy was really clever with all that stuff, hell, even if the other Straw Hats all win their fights, like, let's say they all do. Let's say all the Straw Hats manage to win the fights, Chopper defeats Doc Q, let's say Usopp does manage to defeat Van Auger in some way, and they all win, and then it's all the Straw Hats, all seven of them going up against Blackbeard by himself, Blackbeard would still manage to win and get away, and I'll tell you how, because Blackbeard always has that last-ditch thing of like, all right, I'm just going to turn the whole damn island into a black hole, because he could do that. He's read about the Yami Yami no Mi for years. I think he'd be capable of that. So if he was like he was backed into a corner and all of his men were defeated and lied weakened on the battlefield, Blackbeard would be like, ah, ha, 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 ha. Not bad, Straw Hat. You were able to face off against my crew. But next time we meet, you won't be so fortunate. And Luffy would be like, you know, there is not going to be a next time. You give Ace back right now. He's like, ha, ha, I have some business with your brother. We'll meet again. Black Vortex! And he just, like, slams the ground and just... And, like, he just absorbs his crew into the Black Void as, like, like a pocket dimension kind of thing. Now, I know that itself is a kind of debatable because everything that gets sent into that Black Void seems to get crushed by gravity. But maybe Blackbeard can control it to see what gets crushed or what. But I at least think it would be a mechanism for him to escape. If not, you know, just like, oh, you, you've bested me, Straw Hat. I think it would be a way for him to get out of there if it was looking like the Straw Hats were going to win. And if that was the road that Oda really took it, like if this battle actually played out like that, where the Straw Hats did fight against the Blackbeard crew, um, I, I don't think they would be completely devastated. But then again, like I said, there's so many unknown factors here. Like if we knew more about Doc Q and Lafitte, I feel like they would probably win their respective fights, but we don't. But even if they got really lucky, and even if they did manage to take out all the crew, that Yami Yami no Mi Man is a pain in the ass of a devil fruit, you know? Because Blackbeard could literally just, just like, black hole everything so the crew couldn't get close to him, and then he just grabs Ace, grabs his crew, and then just gets the hell out of Dodge, right? And then they escape. And then Luffy would be like, Ace, no! Now... This would be a really interesting kind of way to end the Jaya arc because Skypea is kind of not important right now, right? Because Skypea is kind of no longer on the docket because Ace has been captured. So uh, we got to figure out a way to go rescue him instead, right? So that would actually completely skew the story on another direction altogether. Um, but yeah... I, I was looking through it, and a lot of people were thinking, like, man, like, the Straw Hats have no chance against the Blackbeard crew. Like, they would get completely devastated. I don't know, man. Like, when it comes to Burgess, who's just a big muscular dude, I think Zoro and Sanji would be able to take him down no problem. It's just a lot of the crew is unknown. But, like, even if you want to give them the uh, due deference and say that they can beat all of them, uh, it's not st Blackbeard's still probably going to get away, right? So that's just how it goes. Um, anyway, yeah, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That was part two of what would happen if the Straw Hats pre-time skip were to face off against, um, the Blackbeard crew pre-time skip, like, right there at Jaya, what would have happened? I guess, um, worst case scenario, Chopper would have died. Chopper and Usopp might be dead. Um, and at best, Blackbeard manages to still escape. I don't really see any scenario where Luffy is able to just straight up, like, defeat Blackbeard right then and there and save his brother. I, I really don't see that happening with all the planning that Blackbeard has and his yami yami no me. I think it's just, even at the end of the day, if it's just retreating, that's what he would do. Um, because he's like, I have big plans. I'm gonna retreat and come back later. Basically something like that. Well, anyway, that's the video. Oh, we actually do have a new episode of Dinosaur Facts today. Dinosaur Facts! Dun, 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 dun. And this is actually brand new dinosaur fact. We're still finding out about stuff about dinosaurs because just the other day in southern China, we discovered, I keep saying, oh, because just the other day in southern China, a fossilized egg of a dinosaur that still has the embryo fossilized inside of it, pretty much perfectly preserved, was discovered. And it was an oviraptor. 
and this is it. So this was the actual fossil, and then here's an artist's rendition of what the embryo would look like inside of the egg. So this is so damn cool, right? So th this was in the Gobi Desert, which makes sense because in deserts, obviously, you have less things to disturb, you know, nests and stuff, so they're preserved better. There was actually an entire overraptor nest discovered that was, like, fossilized. So that's really cool to find this kind of stuff in deserts and, like, also, like, the Mojave Desert and also, like, in Utah and the United States and stuff like that. But anyway, so with the preservation of this egg and this fossil and this embryo, we can actually see the way that the embryo was, like, inside of the egg about to hatch. And this is really fascinating because the way the embryo is laid out in the egg is very similar to the way birds position themselves in modern times to break out of their egg. So birds kind of get into this position where they kind of like propel themselves and use their beaks to break out of their eggs, okay? And so that's how they're born. And so they were thought to be like birds, the only species that really does this. But then we have the oviraptors that were doing this way back during the Cretaceous period. Okay. So that's just another connection between uh, raptors and birds or dinosaurs and birds in general. So it was really fascinating stuff. Um, over raptors in general, they had like a parrot like beak. Um, they were relatively small dinosaurs. They can only grow to like one to two meters tall. Um, and the, this one was discovered in the Gobi Desert, which is around where they would live. Okay. So, you know, very interesting fact. And the idea that we just discovered this like the other day, I was reading about this on Facebook. I'm like, oh, there's my dinosaur fact right there. So, dinosaur facts. We could keep them going till the end of time or until another meteor hits. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This will be Teching and Barry. Signing out. Later, everyone.